Hey, how's it going everybody? Brad the Guitologist here. As a bit of an addendum to my last video about the uh, possible future death of the vacuum tube, we're going to take a look at the Korg new tube. Uh, the Korg new tube looks like this and essentially what it is, it's kind of um, serendipitous that I have looked at a vacuum fluorescent display not long ago in one of my videos and repaired it. Of course it turned out to be a fairly easy repair but essentially that's what we have here is a vacuum fluorescent display. It's going to be kind of hard to see until I zoom in here but you can see the little areas of fluorescence here and that's essentially what the technology is based on is vacuum fluorescence. We actually have some documentation here I would like to go through. Um, let's see, I think if you go to Datasheet, it actually asks you to fill out a form to have them email you the, the data sheet, but uh, I was able to find it on here by just kind of browsing around. Uh, here we go. And I will leave a link to this where I found this information uh, down in the description if you want to peruse this website. Uh, but here's what um, here's what I have in front of me. This may not be the data sheet. This is basically application notes uh, for this technology. Uh, it gives us here some advantages. Um, it only consumes 12 milliwatts per channel. Uh, you can run it on low voltages operating from uh, 5 volts and elsewhere in this sheet it tells you it goes all the way up to 80 volts not to be exceeded by that. Uh, made in Japan. Structure is very similar to a 12AX7. You will recognize this where we have a grid, a control grid. Uh, we have two control grids actually, two anodes which are also called plates. Uh, we have uh, filaments down here as well and I'm assuming in this design the filament is also uh, serves as the cathode. So essentially it's kind of like some of the rectifier tubes that you see where the filament also serves as the cathode. Uh, one of the things also that they recommend in here is that you do not uh, that you do not overvolt the, the filaments otherwise they will easily burn out. So I think this may be something uh, you know that becomes an issue uh, burned out filaments. I do know that in the vacuum fluorescent display that I have um, in my house at the moment uh, on that clock that thing does have some segments that are brighter than others and that is a, a natural result uh, that you know happens over time those things do tend to dim out so I would look for that to be probably the number one flaw that this technology would have to overcome uh, in order to be viable. Um, and long term, I, we just don't really know yet, I don't think, um, how something like this would perform, particularly if you're trying to overclock it or overvolt something like this to squeeze uh, more power out of it. Uh, we have um, uh, we have a, a curve here that you can design to if you want to um, calculate a load line. Uh, it gives you some dimensions here, uh, which is this is a very helpful uh, little diagram. Um, and it looks like, I don't know if this is in millimeters or what, but it's very small. Apparently the thing is, uh, I think less than a quarter of, a, of the size of a, a, you know, an equivalent 12AX7. Uh, so it's a pretty small little little thing, about the size of a an IC chip. The solder uh, is is lead free that they use in this. Uh, we can garner that from this. There's an exhaust seal cap. I'm I'm I guess that's maybe for for heat purposes, possibly. Uh, here are the pin assignments. We can see we have a uh, we're gonna have a filament. Uh, left hand side, a filament for the right hand side way over here. Um, looks like maybe both of those pins are the tied to the same filament. And then we have the center tap for the filaments right here. Uh, no pin right there, no pin right there. This end, That's what the NP means. Uh, this will be connected to ground. That's the internal shield. Here's a basic circuit of a single amplifier. And again the voltages that they 
give it's not explicit right here and there's a wide range of voltages that can be used uh, depending on how you want the circuit to operate and uh, how many decibels of gain you want to see at the output if you want more decibels gain you want to add more voltage and it'll go again it'll operate anywhere pretty much from uh, 5 volts in the circuit uh, all the way up to around around 80 volts is what it says um, but it looks here like um, you know it's kind of designed in a fairly standard way we have a uh, plate resistor here that's supplying uh, power that's coming from from this source uh, we have a uh, we have a capacitor coupled stage to the grid in this case it looks like they're actually biasing this with a grid biased uh, voltage we have 3.3 volts here at this point and you have a way to control the voltage uh, actually control the yeah control the voltage on the on the grid with this pot so this is a grid it's a adjustable uh, grid biased circuit by the look of it um, we have a filament here once again uh, and they're only using this one filament or this one side of the tube in this design this this side's not even being used I guess they're just doing this for demonstration purposes as, as um, just to show you what's possible okay well this is telling you okay for 12 volts uh, the game would be 14 decibels I'm presuming with this circuit that's probably what they're talking about so in this circuit you would have a 14 decibel gain uh, with 12 volt uh, input voltage here's another let's see this is measurement circuit I wonder what this is supposed to mean measurement circuit I don't know but this one is uh, this one has a left and a right so this is a this is basically a stereo um, setup where you would have a you know something for like a preamp for hi-fi perhaps um, So these are some of the these are some of the standard values, I guess that that you would more or less want to start with. Um, I think if I were to get one of these, and I might try to obtain one of these and build a circuit like this, and that this should be uh, definitely something interesting for the channel. Yeah, here is where it tells you about the power supply voltage between five and eighty volts, and that's for this setup right here. And I guess this, this is the same setup we saw a minute ago. Please note, power supply exceeding the permitted limits will void any warranty. So if you put, I think what they're saying here is you can put um, 5 to 80 volts in right here. And you can change the anode load resistances to from between 100K and 330K. So R8, if you were to change this from 100K uh, to 330K, you would achieve these results. You would get... I guess 5 volts, 9 volts, 12 volts, and 30 volts on the anode. Okay, so this is audio characteristics on each anode load resistance where VCC is 12 volts. Okay, so that's, yeah, that's essentially what it's looking at here. If you have this uh, resistor right here, R8 at 100K, these are going to be your results. If you have it at 220K, these are going to be your results. At 330K, these are going to be your results, and you will get the most out of it with the 330K. So yeah, this is some interesting documentation that you can get on these. I'm going to email Korg and see if I can get a sample. So I don't know, maybe this channel is big enough to, for them to send me a sample. I don't know. What do you think if I ask them nicely? <laughs> I mean, I am not, I'm not unfriendly to this technology, um, and it, 
it could be interesting. I'm a complete novice when it comes to um, you know vacuum fluorescent displays and vacuum fluorescent technology is you know this technology doesn't is the same that uh, I'm familiar with. You know when you put it in these terms, it's uh, it's very easy to decipher. So this should be something uh, I can do for sure, and this is something that would be interesting for all of us to to kind of uh, glimpse because you know I I believe there's a very stern possibility here that this could be the future. I'm skeptical of the of the longevity aspect. I'm also a bit skeptical of the microphonics. They do say. Any over voltage will burn out the filament. It's just it's they're very sensitive, so uh, you know you can easily burn out the filament on one of these. And I think it's showing you here a burned out filament. Um, and also, these things are very highly microphonic, apparently, and just about anything can cause them to uh, go microphonic. And they suggest a number of methods here uh, in order to sort of cushion the thing to prevent microphonics and this probably is going to be a, another challenge to this technology um, I don't think it's something that it couldn't overcome um, I just think it is some, going to be something that you know is going to have to be well designed and road rugged, ruggedness as well this is not a tested technology yet as far as road ruggedness uh, so you know who knows uh, how that might go so yeah, let me know in the comments what you think. Is this something? Uh, is this something you would like to see? I'm gonna try to contact these guys and see if they will send me a sample uh, for free. If they won't send me a free sample, I will inquire about uh, uh, where I might be able to buy one. If they can wholesale me one or something, and uh, we'll see. If I can obtain one of these, then we're gonna build a, uh, a little preamp or a little. Uh, pedal circuit or something like that uh, just to cut our teeth on it to kind of uh, put it through its paces see what it sounds like see if it's a technology we might want to build with or something that might be worth pursuing so yeah thanks a lot for watching this video stay tuned in the future hopefully we can come up with something like that and uh, be sure to hit the subscribe button down below and for now y'all take care